Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. We do a lot of 3D printing on here, and we usually use FDM printers because FDM printing is just easier. There's no need to wear gloves, wash the prints with isopropyl alcohol, or cure them with UV light. When choosing filaments, we use PLA for general purpose models, PETG for water resistance and slightly better temperature resistance, ASA for even better temperature resistance and UV resistance, and polycarbonate when we need a stronger thermoplastic material. But for resin printing, there are also multiple different types of resin you can use. Today, I will be picking five of my most used resins to test, evaluating how easy they are to print with, and seeing if they differ in print quality, temperature resistance, and toughness. I would like to thank Sunlu for sending us these resins, the ultrasonic washer, and the UV curing box to review, and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. We're going to test five different resins. The standard resin will serve as our baseline. I will also test a water washable resin and a high resolution 14K resin to compare print quality. I will also evaluate the tough resin and high temperature resin to assess their toughness and temperature resistance compared to the standard resin. For the test print, I'll put several different models on the build plate and print them all at once. We have a scaled down Eiffel Tower that's only 100 millimeters tall. The Goku model, like typical figure printing, will help us compare surface quality and detail sharpness among different resins. The bolt and nut set will test the resin's tolerance to see if the pieces fit together properly. We'll also include an Elegoo Rook chest piece, which is the general model that I use with almost every resin printer I test. Lastly, I will print a simple bench-shaped model with a 3mm thick top and apply pressure to measure how many kilograms of force it can take before breaking. For the printing parameters, I will use a 0.05mm layer height with a 3 second exposure time for normal layers and 30 seconds for the bottom 10 layers. The platform will rise by 10mm between layers at a speed of 10mm per second and the light off delay will be set to 6 seconds. While these settings aren't the fastest and don't push the machine to its limits, they should work well with most resins. The printer I'm using for this test is the Creality Highlight Mage S, which I tested a few weeks ago. I chose this machine for two reasons. First, it supports a 14K resolution, and second, it allows me to redefine print parameters before each print starts. If necessary, I can adjust the settings directly on the touchscreen without having to re-slice the file. Let's start with the most basic standard resin. The print parameters are also pretty standard. I think the 3 seconds for normal layers and 30 seconds for bottom layers should work just fine. My print requires around 100 milliliters of resin, but I will pour in more than enough and reach the 500 milliliter line on the resin tray. As you can see when you start a print on the touchscreen, you can follow the file parameters, the printer firmware parameters, as well as click settings and start new parameters. I will just keep the file parameters and let it start. The estimated time is around seven and a half hours. The print looks successful. I will use the Sunlu ultrasonic washer and resin detergent to wash these models. There are three levels of power. I will set it to maximum and wash for five minutes. Okay, it seems the resin residue between the tiny gaps on the Eiffel Tower have been washed away completely. Then, I will put it in the dryer and UV light box. By default, it will air dry the model for 15 minutes. As you can see, the UV light is off. You can only hear the fan sound which is air drying the surface of the models. After the 15 minute drying cycle is done, it will start a 4.5 minute UV curing cycle. Okay. Everything seems to be working pretty well. I will then print the same model with different resins and compare them side by side. Next, I will try the water washable resin. 
the printing parameters are the exact same as regular resin, but the good thing is you just need to wash it with tap water. Okay, I just need to throw them into this plastic container with warm water. Then, run through the same drying and UV curing cycle. The result is pretty good, and the simple post-processing of water washable resin definitely makes it one of my favorites. Up next, I'll test the 14K high resolution resin. The exposure time for the regular layers is the same as for the standard and water washable resins, but it seems to require a much longer time for the first layer. Although the recommended minimum time for the first layer is 30 seconds, I'll keep my settings and see what happens. All the models fail to stick to the build plate, except for the lighter Eiffel Tower. Since this resin requires 30 to 80 seconds for the bottom layers, I adjusted the time from 30 to 70 seconds, which is the maximum value I could set on the touchscreen. For regular layers, I also increased the exposure time from 3 to 3.5 seconds. These adjustments increased the total print time by almost 50 minutes, from 7.5 hours to 8 hours and 18 minutes. This time, the print was successful except for the bolt and nut, which were missing. It might be even better to follow the suggested parameters at their maximum values. Let's compare all three resins side by side. The print quality of the standard resin and water washable resin is almost identical. The 14K high resolution resin, while requiring a longer print time, delivers crisper details. For instance, the belt detail is sharper compared to the other two. For the Eiffel Tower, which lacks small surface details, all three resins look very similar, with no noticeable differences, even under a macro lens. However, for the Elegoo Rook, the difference is more evident. The text is crisper, and the edges are sharper on the 14K resin model. The text on top is also cleaner on the 14K resin model. As for the bolt and nut, since the print with the 14K resin failed, the standard and water washable resins performed identically. Then, I will test the high temperature resin. It requires a slightly longer exposure time, ranging from 3 to 5 seconds per regular layer. However, I'll keep the same settings of 3 seconds for regular layers and 30 seconds for the bottom layers to see if it affects the print. The print seems to be quite successful, even with a 3 second exposure time instead of 5. However, the resin turns yellow, similar to other clear resins. The models with solid bodies are more yellow than the Eiffel Tower. I will perform a temperature resistance test later and compare with other resins. Finally, I will print the tough resin. This resin requires the shortest exposure time, ranging from 1.5 to 4 seconds per regular layer, but I will stick with 3 seconds, which falls in the middle of that range. The print was successful without any issues. Now let's compare this print quality with that of other resins. In terms of surface quality, it's basically the same as the standard resin. You can see that the Eiffel Tower is slightly bent, as this resin is quite flexible, similar to printing with nylon on an FDM printer. However, when printing a solid object, it won't bend as much as the Eiffel Tower. I will now use a pressure gauge to test how much pressure is needed to break the resin. The thickness of the resin is 3mm. Starting with the standard resin, the last frame before it breaks shows about 22.36 kilograms. Next, I will test a water washable resin, which breaks at 23.79 kilograms, falling within the same range as a standard resin. Now for the 14K high resolution resin, the last frame before it breaks shows 37.66 kilograms, which is surprisingly tougher than both the standard and water washable resins. Then, I will test the tough resin to see how much it can withstand. I applied as much force as I could, reaching almost 100 kilograms, but the part remained flexible and did not break. It could likely resist even higher pressures, but we didn't have the strength to push it further. Lastly, I will test the high temperature resin. Surprisingly, it only withstands about 10 kilograms, with the last frame before it breaks showing 9.49 kilograms. So here are the results. The tough resin can resist 100 kilograms or more, the standard and water washable resins can take around 23 kilograms, the high resolution resin is a bit stronger with 37 kilograms, and the high temperature resin is the weakest, 
only resting about 10 kilograms. Next, I will heat up the Eiffel Tower model. It should be easier to melt or break down under high heat compared to other solid models. Since most resins can resist temperatures of 45 to 55 degrees Celsius, I will start by using the Sunlu filament dryer set to 50 degrees Celsius. I don't want to place the models directly on the heating element, so I will use a box to hold them. After an hour, all of them still look good, with no visible melting or cracking. I will then increase the temperature to 60 degrees Celsius and run it for another hour. The models still look fine, with no signs of cracking or melting. Finally, I will set the filament dryer to its maximum temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. At this point, the standard resin began to break. The bottom and neck of the tower showed visible cracking. However, all the other resins remained intact. Since the high temperature resin claims to resist up to 130 degrees Celsius, I used the heat gun set to 130 degrees Celsius and pointed it at the model. After over an hour, there were no visible changes. Okay, let's talk about my thoughts on these resins and accessories. For general purpose resin, out of the standard resin, water washable resin, and a high resolution resin, my favorite is the water washable resin. It performs just like the standard resin and may cost a few dollars more per kilogram, but you can save money by just using tap water for washing your prints. In fact, a gallon of 99% isopropyl alcohol can cost $30 to $40. Even when I buy it in bulk, which is like four gallons, it still costs $17.5 per gallon. So, while the water washable resin is slightly more expensive, it does save you money on IPA or resin detergent and makes post-processing easier. For the high resolution resin, the models do look crisper when compared under a macro lens, but this only applies if you have a 14K resin printer. The tough resin actually feels like nylon and is pretty flexible, allowing a 3mm thick print to withstand over 100 kilograms of pressure. The print quality is also on par with standard resin. The high temperature resin can withstand temperatures of up to 130 degrees Celsius, whereas the standard resin cracked when I placed it in a filament dryer at 70 degrees Celsius for an hour, although all other resins withstood that same temperature. However, the toughness of the high temperature resin is the weakest. While the standard resin can resist 22 to 23 kilograms of pressure, this high temperature resin can only take around nine and a half kilograms. For the ultrasonic cleaner, it might work better for models with small gaps like the Eiffel Tower, but for general decorative models, I didn't notice any difference compared to using a resin washer. However, there's a tip for saving IPA or resin detergent when using an ultrasonic cleaner. You can place the model inside a Ziploc bag filled with IPA. The ultrasonic waves will still clean the model inside the bag, but you can save a lot of IPA and avoid the hassle of cleaning the machine before using it to wash jewelry or other items. For the dryer and UV box, I appreciate the drying feature. When using IPA, if the surface isn't completely dry before curing, you're likely to see some cloudy white spots on your model. Okay, that's it for this video. If you're interested in any of the resins or accessories used, you can find all the links in the description below. I've also included the link to my website, auroratechchannel.com, where you can find my recommendation lists for 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines, as well as a price tracker that monitors popular machines and updates hourly. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.